Hi everyone, um, Nitro and Fingers here, doing another video on Computer Craft today. I'm going to be talking to you about a game that I built in the space of an afternoon or two, and more specifically, I'm going to be talking about artificial intelligence, and in this particular context, how a suboptimal algorithm that um, has been developed for this particular game actually has positive consequences for the way the program works, and, and perhaps thinking about applying that in different set circumstances. So, let's uh, take a look at the game. It's called Gold Runner. It is a remake of a game called Load Runner that was built for uh, a lot of computers back in the day. It was made in 1983 by Doug Smith. It's a very fun little game. And essentially, um, the goal of the game is to collect gold and to yeah evade enemies and then get to the end of the level. So very, very basic, very simple stuff. Um, what makes it a bit different is that you don't have, you're not able to sort of kill your enemies as you would in most games. So instead, what you have is this little, this little ground zapper that knocks out the, the land beneath you. So essentially, the idea is, oh heck, oh that's not looking good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. So essentially, the the way this works is, is that, uh, you can knock out the ground to the left or to the right of you, and you can use that to also trap um, the the bad guys in it as well, which is a nice little feature of the game. So there we are. It's pretty basic, um, but it adds some really sort of pleasant mechanics. Allows you to sort of use some different puzzle solving things. It's really quite an interesting little game, um, and it's, it's it's a fun one to play. So I quite like it as well. Um, anyway, what makes it, I guess, interesting, at least for me, um, is the, the way the AI works, which is really quite interesting. So I had a crack at reverse engineering as best as I could, and, and I found out a fairly good algorithm, I think, that, that generally applies for it. So Now, in a standard uh, video game, when you're doing AI pathing, what you typically try to do is you try to create an optimal algorithm. That's really easy to do. Um, you use it like A star, and when you want to do that, essentially all you have to do is say, listen, this is my... Um, what, what I do is I want to try and reduce the entire world down to a series of nodes in a graph. Um, I then just calculate the cost of travelling to each individual one that's based on its distance and how expensive it is to get there in the first place. Um, and then once you've done that, you then say, alright, listen, I've, I've got that done, I then just follow the shortest um, or the lowest cost node each time until I find the end of the algorithm. Then you get there and that's it, so it's always the shortest path. And these guys don't do that, and the reason for that is because it would make the game really, really boring. So I'll show you a good example. Let's head back to the title here. So, um, essentially, if they were to do that, then... So you can see these monks are failing their pathing really quite badly. They're just sort of going around these really weird loops. Um, whereas, really, what they want to do is they want to try and follow the lads up and try and get around to me. But they don't do that. The reason for that um, is because it would make the game much too boring and too stilted otherwise. So, if we were to do that, then, unfortunately, the... Um, it would mean that the monks are always following the player much too closely, they're always perfect and they're always moving as fast as possible, so the challenges become far less interesting, um, and they become far less sort of manageable than they would be otherwise, whereas now they serve as more interesting obstacles and things. So, um, The AI, you can see it operating here, essentially what they will do is they will always try to get up to the same altitude as the player by moving to the highest possible, um, the nearest possible ladders or to the nearest possible ledges and things to move towards. Once they get to the same level as the player, they will then just move aimlessly towards him. So that leads to this interesting behaviour where they'll sort of try and climb ladders and then they'll throw themselves off the cliffs trying to reach it, um, which is fairly standard. And it may seem like a weird way to go, but um, I'll show you a simple example. So let's just um, quickly demonstrate this here. So let's suppose put a monk there. Let's put some ground beneath them. Like that, there we are. And a ladder here. The gold. That'll do. Alright, cool. So, here we are. Um, so, essentially, watch what this algorithm means for this particular game. So, um, if I were playing with an A star, then one of two things would happen. Either the uh, monk would never move because he can't find me, or um, the monk would just go directly up to this little area here because it's the nearest possible we can get, and he'd just stay there. Which means he could walk right over him, and the challenge would be far less interesting than it would be otherwise. In this situation, he's actually getting stuck in the ladder, he's going to this loop where he just moves around and around and around. The reason this is beneficial is because it means that um, the player essentially gets uh, has this, this now this sort of recursive obstacle that they just can't sort of deal with until they sort of reach it. So, so the, the AI will get stuck in areas more often, but it means that they tend to be more compartmentalised in levels, and thus they make more interesting opponents. So yeah, a good example of that is in Haven. Um, so take a look at this guy here, he's the one that you want to watch. Uh, here we are. So you'll see that he gets stuck really often. Like I say, he's, he has a real hard time getting out of that hole, no matter where I'm moving to, even if I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all over the court here. He still sort of can't get out of that little gap. Ugh, rats. Let's try this again. And the reason for that is because he can't, um, yeah, he can't escape that sort of area. Yeah. And while that may seem like a bad thing, it actually means that it, um, that particular piece of gold right there 
is really challenging to get because he just doesn't leave this area very often, so you have to really be quite clever about it. There we are. Got it in the end. But yeah, you see, you see he, he's quite challenging, he's quite difficult to deal with, so yeah, it makes for a more interesting sort of opponent in that regard um, as well. It also allows for really interesting puzzle solving, so we'll show you Fortress for that. So this is a really good example of where you can sort of use the enemy AI to solve puzzles. So what we're going to do here is we're going to try and find a way to make this level easier by trapping our, our monks. So, oh, rats. Ugh. Making a lot of mistakes today. Let's try this again. Alright, so here we go. Now, you see they want to try and get as high as they possibly can. He gets stuck. Go one level higher. Uh, not quite high enough. There we go. That's the way. Now let's make him... No, no. Alright, once more, once more. I can do this. Oh, damn. Okay. No. Made that second. Alright, so we'll um, we'll try that, but we'll be a little bit less ambitious about it. Um, what you can do, essentially, is... um. You can try and trap both monks into that little area of cage there, which actually makes the level a little bit easier because it means you don't have to worry about one chasing you all the time. So it's a really nice little feature, and you can use. And like I say, you can sort of fool them into following you because they haven't really got much choice. There we are. That's better. Now he's stuck. I can just get him low enough to. There you go. And then you just drop down, and there you go. And now, he's, and now they're completely trapped. So you've got that nice situation where you can sort of get them stuck inside that little hole, which is a really nice little feature of the game. Um. We can take a look at this other area here as well, because it actually creates a nice little puzzle. So I want to try and get into this little fortress on the left here, and unfortunately I can't because there's this big hole in the middle there. And there are two monks here um, that are waiting to kill me as soon as I can try to get in. <laughs> That's actually kind of nice, because it means I can sort of try and get them in. Um, I can actually use those two monks to try and fill the hole. So let's try and do that. And you'll find they're not racing towards me. If they were using A star, they would do this immediately. But actually it's now a nice, cool, a nice little puzzle that we can sort of solve. So what we want to do is we want to try and get the monks to chase me by having them as near as possible, that's good. Now we move a little bit higher, and now we can get them a little bit higher up yet. Still not quite there, we move back to the same level again, and in they go. And they're trapped, and now we can move across the ladder there as well. So it requires thinking a bit about the monk's behaviour, understanding how they work, and using that sort of puzzles to, to be able to finish the level. So, yeah, has some nice dimensions in it as well. Of course, at least stuff like that too, so, yeah. um. That was pretty much what I wanted to talk about today, um, showing you sort of how that works, and just think about it in game design. We can use standard algorithms, I might show you how to how to write those later on down the track, but sometimes it's fun to look at alternatives and different ways of solving things, because they can have benefits that you might not think about otherwise, um, particularly in these sort of circumstances. So, so yeah, just, um, yeah, something to sort of think about there as well. Alright, listen, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Um, I'll just play for a bit longer here, because it's a, it's a fun game. Yeah, um, if you like this, have a go at making some levels and send them to me. Um, I've, um, I'm, I'm losing uh, losing enthusiasm for, for making levels these days. It's, 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 it's quite hard and creatively taxing work. I'm, I'm having more fun with the engine things as well. So, yeah, if you, if you like it a lot, then make some levels. I'll stick them in a the pack and I'll, um, I'll show them to the world. So, yeah, get your name out in your five minutes of fame, which would be really cool. You can download this from the forums, um, and the level editor is really easy to use. It's, it's built in, so you can just, yeah, you can make modifications, just feel free. Making new levels or editing the old ones if they're too hard or too easy. I've modified this one a couple of times already because it's it's pretty brutal. Yeah, that's right. Listen, okay, that's pretty much it. So, um, yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, I'll try and make some more videos in the future. <laughs> I've been a bit lax, I am afraid, but um, but I appreciate you, the subscribers who are following the videos and sort of keeping on track with things. So, so yeah, that's been really good. And um, I'll try and make some more stuff for you soon. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.